How's it? Mongoose Max Hawaii. This is an original ghost story called Red Ice. I wrote it in September. I started it in September 11th, 2003. I was always wanting to be a music major. That was the sad part. The Bullocks part, fucking frustrating. I try not to be known as a cuss word man, that's why I studied British slang. Limey cuss words don't mean jack to us yanks and vice versa. So keep that in mind when flapping bloody over your gums too often in London proper. Most people don't even know Mark Twain. Mark American Extraordinaire coined the word cuss word. I think cuss was kind of a sorry sod of a person, therefore used to such a type. Mr. Twain reveled in being part of the cuss crowd. Shows how much of an expert he was. Legend has it that his wife used to pore over for hours over his manuscripts just to scratch out the F word. I wonder how unedited version of Huckleberry Finn must have read. I wasn't musing over swear words. I was trying to distract myself. I was burning with envy over how well that dude, if you could call him a dude, play the piano. How well a student, who was probably a business major, relieving homework stress, could tickle the ivories. I was pressed into being a geology major, and how boring can one get? Dirt and rocks. My parents thinking I'd make a good rock advisor for some oil company I was and I think I, can, I could extend a garage band into a profitable band. I dreamed of being a rock and roll orchestral keyboardist, like Rick Wakeman. And I was better at chopsticks in a Chinese restaurant. Me? Trying to make a connection of a presence of magnesium in several similar mineral dirt compositions and somewhere down the hall, not far from the TV room, drifts ghostly good piano playing, half practicing certain parts, stopping, then playing anything, like a kid in a sandbox. I welcomed the sound of and hungered for nuance of soft mallet, donking, even oddly out of tune, the rinky dink uprights strings, then fumbling notes an odd strike with delicious silence because anticipation ripened the pause with full awareness that the player couldn't resist striking the keys again any more than a shark could sinking his teeth into splashing harmlessly pink flesh. This time was different from overhearing piano in the hallway. It was frustrating. Frustrating envy driving down a bleak, bleak night road. The sound of soft, taut, honky-tonk and old-time piano ringing in my now jealous mind. I was never jealous. That made it all the more frustrating. It was a helpless hate. As with all forms of hate, it only consumes you. Whoever said that, no joke. It ate away from me all the energy I needed to figure it out in attempts to dispel it. A spiral of energy flowing away. It was as as sure as life ebbing away if my throat was cut. Not exactly, because the anger of that jealousy kept me sharp as a tack. I could remember every minute detail. The way he fumbled one thumb through a half foot of stack carefully handwritten songs. Thinking of a song selection, tending a peach rum spritzer, adjusting the bench, looking over his shoulder, conversing with the audience, then looking at the top of the upright with his right arm fully extended, all the while giving the uppermost keys a tinking shrill of a trill. It was maddening beyond my containment. It was like watching the most comfortably dexterous human octopus in pause and play. I watched the extremely ivory, brown, stained, high note keys being 
dinkity dinked down with his right hands, inky binky pinkies, and I was struck with envy's venom. Hit me like a scorpion sting that only feels like a small prick at first. A little ouch, then the venom sinks in and it's too late. Did he smoke too much? Did he wipe his ass with that hand? Gardening? Coffee? Yeah. Too much coffee dripping off his pinkies going dinkity dinkies. Like blood dripping down good old Drac's bony claw and staining the keys. He was one of those dudes who trims all their fingernails save the pinky one. That one grows long enough to remove a stray staple or stick in someone's eye in the pinch of a fight. That drove me mad the way some dudes let that just one pinky nail grow. Why? I never asked anyone, but it drove me mad just the same. It also made me focus on the dinky dink and the clickety click of it as I could hear the two separate sounds as if I listened closely. That is, if the left hand chords weren't drowning it out at the time. Then he began telling stories. Not a masculine dude. And not a feminine guy. Just ambiguous. What does it matter? Nondescript version of a dude that makes you forget it was even think about it. Left thumb blindly flipping a stack of papers. Each in a plastic holder. Not caring to pick one by sight. He looked in between mindlessly fiddling and pursuing with the stack by braille or the unknown psychic thumb selection. His right hand was occupied in this way and the other hand was playing the high minor chord dinky dinking. What made the piano keys so stained on every piano? Everyone knows it's the human touch of overuse but they're so stained. Finger oils, dirt, skin smells over and over again in the key of rinky-dink. Human beings must have genetically predisposed to the key of rinky-dink because it's the same keys on every piano. Maybe that's why the blues harp is so enjoyable. It's hard to master. It's exactly the opposite of rinky-dink. Now, Mr. In-Between is telling a story in between songs. A ghost story that he they just remembered I must have heard this one. The left hand plays psychic thumb, the right pinkies go rinky dink, and he's now talking bloody ghost stuff. A pointy, dirty fingernail clanking a click on what looked like an orange brown keys. Rinky dink on dried blood stains over and over, making human cells all scummy and dried. Rinky dink. And that one rinky dink key inevitably, inevitably out of key. How come? Always one out of key dink in the most used key of dinkness. And this ghost story just went on and on like that piano key all off tune. Off tune, yep. Dink, dink, dink. But that mattered not. I saw everything. On one side, that sharp, clever, crusty, crude, clawed dinking on the dried, blood-crusted keys. On the other side, a dull thumb thuddy thud of a psychic seeing blind left thumb bumbling numb thumbing through song sheets. All the while, in between, gray area, in between, Mr. In Between, making up some ghost story. Clear as crystal, I remember the details. Every fuzzy, made-up detail of the most of the ghost story from the gray area that mattered not but mattered because I can see now that story driving down the road wind sweeping in the early sleep half rain across the windshield I glance down across the dash 50 I'm driving snail's pace for this stretch with only an early half snow I was thinking of how red the ice looked at the intersection out of Horse Prairie when it came to the ghost story part. Burning inside and looking at red ice. Red and bluish smudges were shining on the windshield. The bug crud. I flipped on the wipers. Eh, 
I could jive this length in my sleep. Horse Prairie to Dillon is a sleep song drive. I could drive this way with my eyes. Close, closings in Dillon. The word name association popped into my mind and a surprise I never thought of that one before. It's struck me as pretty funny. I burst a funny that made me spit up a mouthful of grog that sprayed the inside of the windshield. The windshield wipers weren't doing much good for that vertical spill dripping down. The wipers weren't just weird, just beginning to work on the countless little bug splats on the outside. The light snow hit like little rain and at least loosened the bug gunk to be pushed to one side by the wipers. On the left, the accumulated deposit of dumb bug remains was like a, a left psychic thumb pile. On the right, clearer side, left streaks of melted snow behind the wiper, catching red tail lights, like long, dry, blood claw streaks. Dinky, dink, dink, the highest register of the keyboard. It was also going rat-a-tat left over the bug hitting the windshield. But it was night. It wasn't bugs. It was pea-sized hail. The rain was turning cold so soon, I thought. In between dumb dumb pile of bugs on the left and the dried claw marks on the right were the wipers going per thunk, shwink, per thunk, shwink, and in between that the ghost story. My anger could ever even a thing clearly through the in between insect splats and all. I could count them clearly. I could count the insect hole going through the windshield better than the dinkity dink with a little blood pinky claw off the off note piano key. Dink. Still, the piano player was not playing the next song. Only that fiddle dink crap and what was what supposed to be the musical interlude while the next song was waiting. Probably a good song, but not yet. Just the stupid ghost story with the nail clickety dinky sound score. Perthunk shwink. The wipers go numb thumb to sharp claw again. In between, blank. Except rat a tat splat. Perthud shwink. Perthud shwink. Another bug. Mr. In Between with the ghost story. Some young, dumb, full of music, ambitious wannabe going on about mother's expectations and family values and per thud shwink in between. Some old story about the crossroads. Piano wannabe reaches for the harmonica and plays in between music. Between the rinky dink and the numb. Not too far to Dylan now. And that damn ghost story. What was it? He could or could not play piano. Not like this. Ghost storytelling piano player. What did he do? Make this up? Smoky ghost tunes coming down the hall. Smoky ghost or smoky tunes. Who would have heard that? Better yet, who would have listened? Per thud shwink. In between the notes. What was there? Silence. The listener's heightened state of what? <laughs> Waiting for the next note? <clears throat> per thud shwink. Some dopey meaningless twerp music students practicing down the hall. But mom said, no, be this, make money, be somebody, make money. Music is useless, tick tock is useless, per thud shwink. The rain turned sleet made the in-between streak of color blur a few lights into a Picasso frown. Almost a Dylan. The university is just on South Atlantic. Preferred shwink. I sped up the pace thinking of the roadkill music music person's turned ghost. Guy or gal? What was it, he said? Ghost stories change, especially local ones, over a brief time. And I wanted to remember this one. How did it go? It was so in between. So I gripped the wheel and leaned closer to the sleep rain going per thud shwink. Thank you wipers per th blood stained pinky claw dumb thumb per thud shwink. 
Yeah, I can see roadkill music student piano down the hall. Damn. I remember with such vigor that the beer in my crotch froze into a snowball. It made me clench my thighs. I thought of that in-between song of Bob Dylan. When he might have had that harmonica in a jaw clamp around his neck. So he could play guitar holding onto the wheel for a snowball hell. With the shwink in between two glowing red eyes. Red ice. Thud screech, snowball hell! Slammed down the brakes. Skidding to the road with a baseball sized hail nugget smashing my windshield. Took a few light as air breaths, making sure no one heard, and parallel parked. I sat, shaking from adrenaline. I wasn't the slightest bit cold. All the thinking behind the wheel made the world turn silent, and the hail ball smashing the windshield shocked me out of my skin. It was like one of those black and white horror movies where the dumbass loner transverses the hallway of a haunted house, happens into the kitchen, in dead silence only to hear creak. Looking at the cabinet, Row! a cheap trick black cat pounces out past his head. I always thought that was a stupid. What the hell is a cat doing in the kitchen cabinet? Looking for cat food? Can opener? This horror flick trick never failed, though. I sat assessing the windshield. I couldn't tell from the star splatter of ice chunks that the glass was actually broken. By the time I was unaware of my breathing, I figured I was parked outside a main hall. Unmistakably, the architecture looked like something that they'd build in the Middle Ages if they had red bricks. The only thing the night silhouette needed was gargoyles and a wrought iron Scooby-Doo keep out gate and maybe bats. The frame of the front door glowed from within and I could hear faint piano music from inside. The per thud shwink of the wipers was stifled the crater point of the hard snowball had stopped it dead still in the middle of a shwink. The piano music lightly delighted the air, as if my preoccupation manifested into form. The waking particular were reminded of, see, it wasn't a dream, just something you were hearing when you slept. The sounds weren't unusual. Many music, many music students practiced after hours, and a willing security guard locked up after the prolonged night sessions. Yet I was just thinking of going inside to look, as a way to calm off the shakes. When I was already standing just outside the front door of Maine, or was it the inside? As I thought, I'd reached for the handle and swung the door open. Yet. At any rate, I was inside, looking down the tall, somewhat gothic hallway. It was lit at the end with an orange light and a dark, long length of unusually tall wooden doors punctuating the path. I mean, these were tall doors. The thick carved wooden door frames were about 15 foot tall to begin with. Leftovers of a bygone days when they made things like ceilings the old-fashioned way, extremely out of reach. But optically, looking down the hall made the multitude of doors appear thinner and therefore taller. That whole story about this floor, or was it another, being haunted, always seemed so ludicrous to me. I've heard other ghost stories, of course, and I kind of collected them, or more like I just liked listening to them. Ghost stories have an appealing charm. Then a simple explanation pops up and the myth goes poof and with it the charm. So I'd have to find another charming story. Yet the story of the haunted main hall, however charming, reeked of a reused formula. The names have been changed to protect its freshness. This one was something about a music student hit and killed by a car crossing the street outside Maine. But it just seemed too contrived. 
It was as if someone invented a look both ways before you cross the street safety story. It was an interesting enough to enwrap my attention before I was told there was a girl who played the flute. Personally, I liked the version where it was a guy who played the piano. Why not? I can't play. At least all I know is when I needed an eternity of practice to play piano as well as him because of the story I heard. I heard this ghostly piano playing was from some kind of maestro. I kind of secretly wished I could take lessons. Although, what would that be? Some sort of cheating? Having a ghost play for you? Or, inadvertently, selling your soul to a demonic agent? Taking 10% of your very life essence to permanently link to satanic design? As I play a wicked honky-tonk endless ditty? I saw a figure at the end of the hall. It wasn't a trick of the light. For a moment, I thought it was the security guard, it, but I just passed him. I know I did. I was concentrating on the music from down the hall, but I saw the night guard. I distinctly remember because I thought it was the short guard who stuttered sometimes when you looked him in the eyes. I thought I knew it was him, and I was going to make a point to say hi, and I was just going to see who was playing and probably possibly ask for lessons. I thought it was him, at least, but he almost passed by like I was invisible or a normal sight not worthy of a lazy word. I even remember looking into his eyes, not thinking to. Per thud, shwink, red eyes. Red ice? Red ice at the stoplight? I heard, him, I heard him say something I can't remember. He must have gotten braces, because I saw that the row of metallic lines glisten as he walked past. Did I say hi, or only thinking, think it and rudely say nothing? What did I? What did he say? I turned around. I was on the other end of the hall, looking backwards, and he was gone. Only the long, dark length of the hall with the orange light on the other end. It must be okay, then. I heard the music coming from the upstairs, from the, up to the staircase, the third floor, since the second is the first, ground floor, and the first floor is a labyrinth of underground dungeon of basement art labs. I went upstairs to the piano playing music, pulling me like a tractor chained in tow of a slow-moving Mack truck. All the varieties of music and different styles of tunes. Some I knew, some I didn't, quilted together and mingled as I ascended the flights of stairs. Going up one more floor? I must have been on the fifth floor, but there wasn't a fifth floor. Fourth was the top, and it's only the internal attics of the spires of the towers. So I figured it out on the fourth, with the internal thought two flights of stairs make one floor. I thought I'd make an automatic count, so there, top floor, plain and simple. What was I trying to desperately remember? What was just this, what, just what the security guard said to me in passing? If I remember that he said, at least I could be an acknowledgement that I paid him a courtesy of a howdy, rather than just drifting by. It was the piano music that was clouding my mind but he kind of hissed something across that metallic row of braces. It made it look like a row of gleaming smile of fangs. A row of very small, shiny fangs hissing out red eyes. That was it. He probably thought I was stoned, and he said red eyes, bemused at the prospect. I went down to the fourth floor, which is the same as the first, just not as tall. Pursuing, pursuing the piano music. It seemed thicker in the air, with muffled loudness, but I couldn't tell what kind of song or style it was at all. It drew me just the same. I felt like I passed the ultimate curiosity barrier already, and this was more like, for a better word, gripped. 
down the hall, past all the pianos. In one of the practice rooms was a door that was open. Inside that small door, and a corner door slightly ajar, with that orange glow light within. They really should use better lighting other than dim incandescent bulb and high ceilings. I went in, wondering why the guard left all these doors unlocked. Well, why not? Nobody home but us chickens. It wasn't a concert grand, but it was a grand piano nonetheless, and nobody was playing it. But the keyboard cover was up as if somebody had just finished playing. I figured the room to be deafening with music, but it was silent, somewhat. The music seemed to be crammed in my head. Not so deafening, but akin to down the hall, just this, but just the same, only in my head. Playing along like a pesky tune stuck in my head. What a room! High ceiling. Hell, the ceiling was so high it didn't have one. Well, it was so up there, it was in the dark and couldn't be seen. It was the tower room. One of those prestigious rooms right in the core of one of each building's towers. The room itself was faceted. Each of the walls could have only been a double arm's length across, with a single arched gothic window in it looking out into the night and a dimly lit street below across the yard. Each window went up as a column of glass and ended in an arched point. They looked double the height of a man, but couldn't be. Maine's windows aren't that long up. I tried to visualize the building. Which room was this? It wasn't Quasimodo's quarters. This room was ornate. Not frilly ornate. More like thick, oak, simple, solid, noble. What was Quasimodo's favorite bell that he rang? Oh yeah. St. Mary, you up there? No answer. But the music still sounded in my head. And it was dimming, growing fainter. No. If it weren't silent, if it went silent, I'd forget it and never remember. Tinker on the keyboards. Play along with the music on the old noggin. And quickly, I sat down at this grand and was struck by how shiny black it was. It absorbed light and kept it. It looked over the top of it towards the end, which was in the dark. And I could see the end of the room, even though it was in the dark. There was a mirror hanging on the wall. And I could see myself in it. Sitting at the piano and looking at myself in the mirror was distracting. The only reason I could muster why people did this had to do with concert pianists practicing a stoic stone face as they played. I couldn't think of another reason, actually. The keyboard, all 88 keys, was either blacker than black or whiter than white. The night seemed bright when it flowed in because the light just flowed into the piano's polished blackness and simply fell into a void of space. There was no sheet music, no sheet music holder, just some blank paper on top of where it should be, and a pencil, not very sharp. I looked at myself. I looked all right, considering the near miss of the hail nugget from outer space. The music was getting slowly softer and softer in my head. Heck, plunk it out. Write some of this down. It's the good stuff. Maybe I'll make a mint off of it. After all, most of good arrangements are composed of a few musical phrases. Jot that down and bingo, a hit tune. I was afraid to touch the piano, and my mind was going blank. Then the hate returned. I'll lose my only chance. Concentrating. The music was fading into a light, wavering buzz. Curse that piano player. Curse that damn guard. 
This was all mine. A, a kind of greed possessed me. That if I clenched my teeth, my molars would have grinded into splinter chunks of pointed white glass. Curse the snowball. Curse this lot. Curse the all's mine. The moment. The room. The night. The piano. And above all, the music. It was my music. All mine. The silence went total, and so did the fear. No! <laughs> clenched my fists above my head. Damn it! Bringing them down with a hard crash that can only be heard in the bones. The music returned. Yes! I spread my fingers only to hear the knuckles crack as if I opened my fists. I usually cracked my knuckles the other way around. Now, the music. I glared at the pencil on the blank pages, laying flat. There were small spots of blood on the white page. I must have broke my hands or reopened cuts because my fingers were bleeding slowly from the tips. Never mind, I'll get the tune on the keys. Then jot it down on the page and I'll be out of here before they find out who banged the piano out of tune. If I broke my hands, that crash must have thrown more than a few keys whose strings off key. Wait, it went dee dee da, la dee da. The keyboard was getting messy. Just get it down on page. I raised my right hand above my head, fingers spread like one of those old masters ready to strike the choice chord. Looking over, the page was splattered with a few more red dots. That's okay, there's another clean page underneath. Just the right chord. I brought my hand down and yes, that chord. Hold that chord and write it down. Trouble is, my finger broke backwards with a clinking crunch that made me bite down in pain, and I really think I did shatter my molars on one side of my mouth. I fumbled for the pencil. The page was bloodied more than blank space to write. Crumpling that page to the floor, next page. Just the birthing pains of creativity. Stay calm. Pencil and awkward left hand looking over to my right on the keys. D, F sharp, B flat, ha <laughs> ha. The old joke, C sharp, B flat. My pinky finger was twisted back. What note was that supposed to be? It was on that or that key. Trying to move my fingers, my pinky simply cracked and flapped a little more off into the air to the side. It hurt. I wanted to reach over and twist it back, but I'd lose the page. Try again. Right hand up, posed for creativity. Down, smashing apart some of the keys. Felt like I broke some keys off. Wrong chord, try again. Don't let the pencil go of the pencil. It was slipping out of my left hand. The page was bloody. New page. Crumple that page, left the blank page on top. Just get some of the music right. Then write it down, yeah. Left chord and some melody verse and get it right. I started banging away like an expert. How did that happen? I couldn't play a wrong note or chord. Talk about banging out a tune. I was really banging on the keyboard as if the keyboard s sucked my fingers in on top of the right sweet notes. I could do no wrong. I could not stop. The keys began to get sticky with the force that compelled me to continue. I could not... I could do this for hours and hours. Forever. I got that euphoric dream, that state that virtuosos must get. I looked up from the keyboards and saw the page didn't have a spot on it. Pure as the driven snow. I'm going to have to find that pencil real soon. I was slamming out a musical composition that was pure ecstasy to my ears. I smiled with such a greedy vice. I could feel my skull split. I felt no pain. I looked over to the piano in the maestro's mirror to capture the moment. I had the stoic composure of master. A poker face that only the old west could produce. Then a smile came to my eyes. 
I glared at myself as my cheekbones began to cramp into face with maddening glee. My eyes smiled with a smile of pure sanity. Then blood ran from my scalp, filling them and down my face. Flowing, glistening, red lines down to my lips. I must find that pencil and write this down and get out of here. I couldn't stop. I couldn't break away from the glaring deep into my own eyes. If only that wannabe great honky-tonk piano player at Horse Prairie could get a load of me. He'd seal his piano playing with the clothes of the keyboard cover for good. I felt the smile welling up in me. My face hurt. Hell, my whole head hurt. Except my ears. My eyes burned pinholes into the mirror's eyes. What did that accursed guard say? The slit of my mouth went ear to ear, opening a smile of small, white, broken, pointy little teeth. Red ice, I hissed. The pencil! I looked left for it and couldn't stop playing. My left hand kept banging away, and the pencil was stuck in it. The little, the dull little pencil was stabbed through my hand and sticking out of my right thumb as my hand kept banging down the rhythm chords. Ah, there's the pencil. I'll get to it later. The rhythm, that is. First capture the elusive melody. My right hand had stopped on the broken, smashed keys of the upper register. It was da, da, dee, dee, da. Was it da, da, dee, dee? The picky fingers were flapping about and twisting back and forth, plucking at the equally broken keys. Dink, dinky, dink. Damn. Wasn't it da, da, dee, dee? It was da, da, dink, dink. Dinky, dink. Went the finger. I'll come back to it. If I play long enough, I went up, went the hands, and back down to a fury of team of racing horses. That's better. The page got more red spots on it, then more streaks. I looked into the mirror. I smiled at myself. Red ice. I can't stop now. Why should I? I could do this forever. The short security guard hands shook as he held the walkie-talkie to his cheek. Yeah. Outside main hall. On South Atlantic Avenue, you better come here soon and inform police to send ambulance. I thought I heard something, so I rushed out. Looks like someone hit a deer. Might be a buck elk. The rack points went right through the windshield. Cold black mountain winds crept through the green evergreens, and snow began to fall lightly. The crackling buzz of the talkie. Yeah, they come down here across the road. Little red eyes, yeah. Just send an ambulance. Atlantic, outside University's Maine. What? Anybody alive? Just one guy. <sniffs> Don't know. Didn't unscrew him from the antlers to take a little pulse. Looks like he took it through the face, chest. <sniffs> no, could be any one of the students. Driving drunk on the ice, hit a deer. Huh? Wait. Uh, he was alive for a bit. Looks like he tried to claw his way out through the broken windshield. His fingers are cut to ribbons. Some of the missing and a... <sniffs> no, just the blood on the road ice. I thought it might be gas leaking. <sniffs> just get over here. You gotta see this. I'd peek, but I'm freezing here. Plus, the road is already slicker than sleet. So much since all the, all the ice, all the red. <sniffs> I said red. Red ice. He, he hissed through his braces as they glistened into the street light. No, I didn't forget to lock Maine. I heard piano playing. I'll lock it up after the music wannabe night owl goes home. Yeah, it's some old, same old story. Play into the night, blah, blah. You go up there and they're gone. Don't even bother to thank you or say goodnight or something. Just slip away wherever they go into the night without a word. Me too. They can all go back to hell. That's where they came from, right? Ha! <laughs> he coughed. 
Just get someone over here. The sirens were already piercing the night snowfall in the small town. The end. And we Aloha. <laughs>